Mallory's Infants is a two-form entry school in northwest London. With 61% of pupils learning English as an additional language and 32% designated as special needs, they've achieved impressive results in literacy. Their Key Stage 1 teacher assessment shows 88% of pupils reading at level 2 and above, rising to 96 for writing and 97 for speaking and listening. Welcome, Kung Shi. Zhao Shang Hao. In this programme, we'll see how teachers use a creative cross curricular approach to Key Stage 1 literacy developing pupils' listening and speaking skills and their phonic knowledge to produce high-quality writing and reading. Jimp, 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 hit it. The most fundamental aspect for children in an infant school is the understanding that reading and writing is enjoyable and meaningful. And if you haven't got that established, then you're fighting a losing battle with children. Year Two's China Topic offers rich opportunities for cross-curricular work. Trainee teacher Joe Trevelyan role-plays Kung Shi, a character in the Chinese Willow Pattern story, allowing the children to ask questions to enrich their narrative writing. Kung Shi, we've been reading your story. What was it like being locked away in the pagoda? I had lovely clothes to wear and delicious food to eat but I was so lonely. Does anybody want to ask Kung Shi any questions about her father? What did he look like? He was a very tall, thin man, and he liked to have beautiful clothes covered in gold. Hot seating works particularly well in literacy because you have a story. They had had the Willow Pattern story read to them the day before we did the hot seating, so they've got the story in their mind, and it can bring a story alive. How can you be immortal when, if you die, then you come back to life again? I'm not immortal anymore. I'm an immortal. Yeah. I live forever. The gods have given me special powers, and that allows me one visit to Earth as a human every hundred years. So we need to start by writing the name of the character here and drawing a picture of what we think that character looked like. And I'd like you to write two or three sentences about that character. John <laughs> Okay. Many children need a visual stimulus in order to do a piece of work. The physical process, which is the kinesthetic process of actually drawing, and then also having the visual image at the end of it, is two further ways of reinforcing what they've got in their mind that they can bring out and put into writing on a piece of paper. Kung Shi, um, how old is the weeping tree now? A thousand years. Thank you. And there were a number of children today who wouldn't normally ask questions, who are children who, for whom English is a second language or who are usually quite shy, and yet all of them did, in fact, ask a question. Some of them not in the group, some of them came up individually, but they all asked a question. So you allow them the opportunity to find the information they need in the way that suits them. Let's have somebody who'd like to read their own story. Theo, would you like to come and read your story? One sunny day, Kung Shi and Shang were flying over the sunny horizon. After that, they swept down to the ground and looked for some nice juicy worms. King Shi and Chang saw the bad fox. The fox was hungry. He loved doves on toast. And their little 18 month chick was saying, Mama, Dada. It was so cute. And soon later, they were adults. And Kung Shi and Chang were grandma and grandpa. Oh. I get to be a grandma and grandpa as well. What a wonderful story. I think now we should say, Bye, Kung Shi. Sai Chiang, Kung Shi. Why are we at school today? Why? What would go at the end of that? Angel just gave you a clue. She said, why? Deputy head Sally Quartzen embeds earlier phonic learning with Croker the puppet. Croker helps us to make sure we say the words properly and we say them so that we can also help ourselves to spell them properly. Ho -wa, ho -wa. Ho -wa. No! no, it's not ho 
Hello. It's how. It's how. Oh, hang on one second. Let's just listen to Angel because that's really interesting. These guys say it's who and you say it's how. What do you say it's how for? Because the O and the W do what? The O and W make ow. Oh, like ow, I hurt myself. Uh, uh, yes. Wicker. No. <laughs> what did he do wrong then? Wicker. He missed the, 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 the ch on the end. Mohammed, you are such a hero. He forgot, my dear, that the CH it's says very, ch. It's, it's very ch. easy to work it out because you can just it's do weird. what? It's not Because there's two it's blends and Caitlin made those blends perfectly. We will continue to develop more synthetic phonic use within the school. Children do need that specific knowledge of how sounds work and how they're used. So while the phonics will be dealt with regularly, daily for the 10 or 15 minutes that it will need to be allotted it will also be picked up on and referred to throughout their work in both reading and writing in the rest of the literacy focus development areas year one's trip to the tower of london provides inspiration for the children's recount writing Today we're going to do something called getting ready to write. We've got these sentence starters here, we're going to use those today. And finally we're going to draw our trip in order. Talk to your partner about those pictures and about our trip yesterday, really quickly. Getting ready to write is really important, particularly for this age group. It's one thing that we actually do across the school. Um, just because the more experience they've had it in talking about their writing, thinking about their writing, makes them better writers. We saw loads of things from a long time ago, like knights in armour, and there was loads of corridors and loads of stairs we had to go up. I saw the, I saw the axe fly down. I saw how they chopped their heads. I saw you in the, in one of the towers. Now, what we're going to concentrate on the rest of today is organising those ideas. This is my recount. Some of those sentences are actually a little bit boring, aren't they? There's lots of towers in the Tower of London, isn't there? Mm, yeah. Well, how can I make that a bit more interesting? We went to the White Tower. <gasps> we went to the White Tower. Who can tell me another tower we went to? Uh, August. The Bloody Tower. Oh, we went to the Bloody Tower. Oh. Next, we went to the Bloody Tower. So, you have to use your reading skills. Oh, I got a blend there. C and R together. It's going to make a crown. That's what I saw it. Crown. 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 Okay, oh, another blend, B and L together. What would that make? Wow. Bloody Tower. Bloody Tower, well done. Ledor, what's your sentence going to be about? We went to the White Tower. It's nice to have different sentence starters. Can you think of a different sentence starter to use? Which one? Then. then. What word? Then. Fantastic. Click on it. Then. We. we saw, right, let's click onto our page. Then we saw. Quick busy for the moment, can you go? What do we need for the end of the sentence? Full stop! Full stop! Then we saw White Tower. Does that make sense? We're missing a word. Okay, now let's read the sentence. Then we saw the White Tower. Does that make sense now? Yeah, full stop! Fantastic! In the lesson we spend a lot of time on the carpet doing lots of talk first and then getting them to go off by themselves to plan their story so they've talked about it they're drawing about it and then moving on to doing the narrative because once they've sort of got those um, ideas and skills in place it actually makes it much easier for them to write a fictional piece of writing about a castle so Today, we're learning to write the ending of our story using super sentences. And juicy words. Good. With a sentence starter and juicy words. Excellent. So, once upon a time, a... Nasty. Nasty, even. Well, you could use mean or nasty or both of them. It's up to you. Okay, you see if you can put it in. 
how can you end the story to let us know that everything worked out fine thanks to the prince? The blind man chopped their head off. But you said the enemies already run away. Yeah, but then the knight was by the bushes and then he jumped out of the bushes and he chopped their neck off. Once upon a Tuesday, there was a beautiful princess. She was beautiful. She went to her bed. In the end, the nasty goblin goblin and the brave princess went over the hill and into the castle the end this year in year one we've seen a massive amount of progress with children's development with their use and application of spelling strategies and word level strategies in not just their reading but in their writing as well Year six pupils from neighboring Mallory's junior make their weekly visit to read with their partners in year one we're going to start off with the Year Sixers listening to their Year One partner reading. Okay, and after that, you're going to be able to go over and choose a game. Katie and Dad went to the morning. Break it up. Wild and what's this one? Wild life park. For young children and looking at the idea of a whole child, if we can use even more of what turns every single child on, and that's what I'm talking about, that creative approach, if we can give them even more ownership and more control over how and what and where they take their learning in literacy, I think that the results that, that they produce will be even better. Gods turned Kung Shi and Shang into flying squirrels and they flew up to a branch. The eagle looked around to find the doves and crash bumped straight into a big branch. Kung Shi and Shang made a lovely home in the old oak tree and had four cute little babies. And they all lived happily ever after.